Have you ever had a friend who seemingly overnight managed to change their whole life around? Maybe they were like a total bum before and suddenly they're like a productivity powerhouse. Or maybe they changed in the opposite direction. They're someone who you thought was definitely going places and suddenly they're just like total bums with no prospects in life. These big life changes, these changes to people's behaviors and their habits don't often come out of nowhere. They usually coincide with a big change to people's contexts and their environment. And that's what I want to talk about in today's video. In this video, we're going to talk about habit discontinuity. It's my favorite concept in all of habit science. And I can't wait to tell you about it. Let's get into it. Okay, so the topic of today's video is something called habit discontinuity. According to research in psychology, there are a few moments in our life where we have these windows of opportunity, where old habits fade away naturally and new habits can be built with very little resistance. Now, knowing when these moments are sounds pretty useful, right? I certainly think so, but for some reason, almost nobody outside of the world of academia seems to talk about this topic at all. So I wanna change that in today's video. But to explain what habit discontinuity is, we first need a refresher of what habits are in terms of our psychology. Okay, so quick refresher on what habits are. In terms of our psychology, we think of habits as mental shortcuts. They're connections in our brain between a behavior that was rewarding for us in the past and the context in which we perform that behavior. Through repetition, our brain begins to make this association between the context and the behavior, which means the next time we're in that same context, that behavior comes to mind automatically. Let me give you some examples. Context. It's the morning and you see your coffee machine. Behavior. Go and make coffee. Here's another one. Context. You see the cigarette packets on display in the shop. Behavior. Go and buy some cigarettes. Example number three. Context, you're a Londoner and you have to leave for work. Behavior, go take the tube. Now in all of these situations, we're making the decision of what to do automatically without using much brain power. Rather than considering questions like, is this really what I want to do right now? Or is there a better alternative to this? Instead, we're just acting on these mental shortcuts, these associations, these habits that are in our brain that makes the decision making very easy, very fast and very consistent. Okay, but now I want you to imagine a world where those specific contexts are gone. So it's the morning, you see a coffee machine, but it's not the same coffee machine that you're used to. You're not really sure how to use it and you think, oh, actually, I'm not really that tired today. Maybe I don't need coffee. Or imagine if the government suddenly banned the display of cigarettes in shops by law. Suddenly, when you can't see the cigarettes, you don't feel like buying them anymore. Or imagine if the usual route that you take to work is disrupted because, well, the people who run the tube are on strike. Now you can't take the route that you usually do. Instead, you have to try something new and maybe discover an even better route. These are all situations that have actually happened in the past. I'm sure we've all changed our coffee machine at some point, and suddenly the decision to have coffee that day isn't as automatic as it was before. In the case of displaying cigarettes, the UK actually made this a law a few years ago, and researchers have found that youth susceptibility to smoking dropped from 28% to 18% after the ban was in place. And in the third example of commuting to work, this also happened right here in London. In 2014, there was a big tube strike and many people had to find new ways of getting to work. They had to try routes that they've never done before and many of them actually found they discovered better, more enjoyable ways to go to work. We know this because by tracking Oyster card data, which is the card that you use to enter the tube stations, it was found that one in 20 of those people who had their route disrupted by the tube strikes never went back to their old route. So in all of those situations I just mentioned, our old habits were broken because there was some sort of change to our context. And this small change in a very specific area of people's lives was enough to disrupt their habits and help them build new ones very quickly. But what if the change to our environment wasn't so small and specific? What if there were moments in our life where our environment changes in very dramatic ways, which means that many of our old habits will be broken and we can form many new habits simultaneously and without much resistance? Well, that's exactly what habit discontinuity is. 
In fact, I'm experiencing a habit discontinuity window right now. I've just moved house from Cardiff to London. I'm in a brand new city in a totally unfamiliar environment, which means that a lot of my old habits that were tied to contexts in Cardiff are no longer available to me. So I'm having to form lots of new habits now that I'm here in London. Another example of a habit discontinuity window, which is very painful, is actually when we go through a very big breakup, especially if it's somebody that we used to interact with on a daily basis. So many of our habits are cued by the context of being with a specific person. When this person who you used to spend every day with is no longer there, then that actually disrupts your habits in very dramatic ways. Now, obviously this is a very difficult time in people's life, but it's also a big window of opportunity because when this person leaves, it means that that context, that cue to a lot of your old habits has now been broken, leaving you with this psychological blank slate in which new habits form much more easily, which is why sometimes you see people leave a relationship and suddenly they become like a total fitness enthusiast. Or sometimes people look at their ex and see them be like a completely different person to the person they were when they were dating. That's because of habit discontinuity. They leave the relationship and suddenly people are left with this blank slate with which to reinvent themselves with very little psychological resistance. So the practical takeaway for this video is that if you're someone who's recently gone through a breakup or you've moved house or you started a new job or really just done anything that's meant that your environment has changed in a pretty dramatic way, then it's good to recognize that what you're experiencing right now is the special window of opportunity that diminishes as time goes on. We basically have this psychological blank slate where our old habits are now gone and building new habits should be much more easy. So by knowing about habit discontinuity, you should hopefully be able to recognize when you're in one of these windows of opportunity and use that time to your advantage to shape your new context in a way that's going to help facilitate the habits that you want to build and ultimately help you be the person that you you want to be. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. It feels really good to be back making videos again, and I will see you next week. Bye bye.